Good afternoon, everybody. Verl Workman, CEO of Workman Success Systems. Welcome to another Wednesday Flash brief Briefing. I am excited today to have a great guest with us. We have one of our uh, one of our coaches here at Workman Success Systems. Not only a great coach, but also a great client, uh, Reed Martin. Reed, welcome and thanks for joining me on our Flash Briefing today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, I've been loving watching the uh, these flash briefings, and they've been they've been great. So hopefully, I don't let anybody down. <laughs> I, I don't think that's possible. You know, I, I want to get the small small talk out of the way. You know, Reed and I have a lot in common. We uh, we both spend a lot of time in the pool, and so I remember the first time I met Reed, and we were talking about swimming. I was making a big deal about swimming thirty or forty laps that day, and uh, Reed looked up at me, and he's like, "Yeah, I did that before six a.m." And then I did another two or 300. Reed, you, you've got a little bit of a swimming background. Yes. Um, so I swam competitively for 16 years. Um, started when I was five years old and uh, went all the way up through. I got to swim for uh, Indiana University. I uh, was actually got to be part of a Big Ten championship team in 2006. It was the first one in like 21 years or something. So that was, that was great. And got to meet a lot of awesome people along the way. Yeah, that's really cool. So a lot, a lot of people, when they see me getting ready to get in the pool, you know, I, I'm there with my swimsuit and I don't want you to get a visual on this because it'll ruin the whole, you know, visual experience of this Facebook live. But, you know, so if you can imagine me with my goggles on and I've got my, my, uh, my, uh, my, what do you call that little thing? I listen to books on tape with my iPod that's waterproof. And I put that in my ears, my swim cap on. And I, and then I, and then I, and I step back and I do this with my arms you know, like I saw Michael Phelps do. And a lot of people think, hey, that guy looks a lot like Michael Phelps. But you, you're telling me that's not actually true. You, you actually swam some laps with that guy. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like we were, you know, buddies or anything like that. But we have, I've got to swim at some of the uh, different events or different meets that he's been been at. Um, so I was, that was pretty neat uh, to get to be around a lot of world-class athletes and people that are, you know, the best of what they do. I mean, it's a whole different world when you get to that level. Yeah, what a what a what a cool experience and what a cool uh, what a cool thing to have in your in your pedigree. So you're you're an Indiana native. native. Tell us a little bit about your family. Um, so I it was and so if you're going to tie swimming into it a little bit, uh, what's kind of interesting is so my mom has been terrified of the water for a long time growing up. Um, my dad was always in around you know lakes and rivers and that kind of stuff. They they spent a lot of time on boats, um, and so they made a decision whenever they got married to. Uh, they were either going to have a pool or a boat and they wound up and had a pool instead. And so we spent hours and hours and hours uh, in the pool doing stuff. Um, my dad likes to tell people he had me in the water at six weeks old. Um, so I've, I've always been in the pool and it's been awesome. So I started swimming competitively at five and it's, it's been the, it's been great for us. Um, so our family's grown up in the water. My sister, uh, she went to the, uh, the other school in Indiana up North at Purdue um, she wound up and has married. Um, he is now the assistant swim coach at Ohio State. Oh, wow. So, so swimming is, is in our family's blood, and it's been fun to pass that on to my daughter. So I've got two little girls. Um, they both love being around the water. Um, so if my dad had me in the water at six weeks old, we had to, had to be, do a little better because I'm, I'm pretty competitive. Uh, so <laughs> our oldest daughter was in the water at three and a half weeks old. Uh, we had her in the pool for the first time, you know, just getting her used to it and stuff. So that's been fun. Uh, she's got to do the summer league swim team the past couple of years. Um, obviously, this year has been a little bit different, but we've we've had fun um, spending a lot of time in, in our pool, trying to get them used to it and, and get it to where they can be competitive as swimmers also. I just, sure, I, so the daughters are protégés. Are you looking for, are you have Olympic hopefuls? I was a little early for that, being, being only seven and four, but um, – <laughs> They, uh, they, they love being in the water. So that's, that's, that's fun for me. I think, I, I think that's really cool. It sounds like there's a little intercollege uh, rivalry going on within your family. Oh, absolutely. Um, even whenever we're there, it's, you know, IU and Purdue are doing dual meets. We'll uh, send messages back and forth, you know, checking in on scores and seeing how's, how's everything going. Uh, fortunately, IU has been at the top of their game for the past few years. Um, they were even, they had a shot at one of the NCAAs. Uh, last year, I think they wound up third at NCAA. So that was, that's pretty awesome to see what they're doing. And then they're, they've been generating a ton of Olympians. So that's been really cool to watch. That's awesome. All right. So let's, let's have a little business chat for a minute. So tell me a little bit about your real estate uh, team. Tell me about your business. Um, so we we're in full on growing mold, um, going through the whole pandemic and COVID-19, um, 
we continue to do the things that we were supposed to be doing um, and it's, it, it's paid dividends for us. Uh, we've never been this busy. So that's been very fortunate. Um, so it started off my wife and I, um, kind of started, well, I guess I've been doing this for 13 years. My wife started about four years ago. Um, she got in, she started off as my assistant. It didn't take very long to realize that that wasn't going to work. And she wanted to get licensed <laughs> also. Um, so she, she got licensed about four years ago. Uh, shortly thereafter, um, we started coaching with you guys. Best decision we ever made. Um, and then we just, you know, making sure we had everything in place to, to grow it into a pretty successful team. Um, so we've got an admin right now that's actually a, a licensed agent. She was selling for about four years ago. She's got some little kids, so she wants to do more of the nine to five kind of thing. Um, but she's an absolute rock star. Um, th I'm in a Remax office and the Bouge system that they're working on, uh, Remax Integra, which is the largest Remax franchisee, actually had her on talking about what she's doing with Bouge and how she's actually setting it up correctly. And it's it's been phenomenal. Um, we just brought on our, another buyer's agent. Um, she had her license go active on a Thursday at like 11 o'clock or no, on a five o'clock. She had three showings that day, four on Saturday, three on Sunday. She had two accepted offers by Monday and she couldn't even get into the MLS. Wow. So <laughs> That's it's fun to see. Fun, and we've been, you know, we we really tried to get everything trained up before we got to this point, so we can have people hitting the ground running. Um, my team is actually doing an interview for another buyer's agent as we speak for it. We just bought on a marketing director because we've gotten so busy on the transactions that our admin couldn't do that herself. So we had to we had to get her some help, take some of the stuff off of her plate. And then I also have a property management side. We've got about eighty rental units that we manage. So I've got another agent that um, he doesn't really want to sell, but he's been licensed. He's a he's actually a local fireman. And so he helps me with the property management and most of the day-to-day -day stuff he deals with. So it's it's been a lot of fun. So we're at six now and we're hoping to have seven or eight here in the next couple of months. That's fun. Financially, have you seen a, a tremendous, an impact on your business and your lifestyle as a result of, uh, you know, setting up your business differently and running it like a business instead of just, you know, being a realtor? Yes. Oh, man, I, I tell anybody that'll listen, I was like, most agents treat this as a job and not as a business. And when you treat it like a business, it, it changes everything. Um, you know, I, I know you're always pushing doubling every year and we've doubled every year. We've been with you guys. We, we Well, we just missed last year, but we were incredibly close. Um, and we really haven't changed many of our goals, even with everything going on, just because we're so close to them. You know, it's funny when I tell people we're going to double, they don't believe it because they've never done it before. And every time you double, the next time gets harder because the, the number gets twice as big, right? It's just yeah. you know, going from 50 to 100 units is a hard one. Going from 100 to 200 is a big, big nut. And when you well, go from two to four, it gets even bigger. And it's, it has been great, though, like going to the leverage events and you're around teams that are doing, you know, two, three, four, five hundred transactions a year. And, you know, the, when you listen to them talk, they're having the same problems that I'm having they were having the same issues and trying to grow their team as I was, they're just dealing with more people. So it's not, it's not a lot different. Like getting rid of those limiting beliefs has been a game changer for us. All right. So you got some, you got some uh, groupies on the, on the Facebook live with us today. Everybody we're talking to Reed Martin from Indiana reads one of our coaches at workman success systems, also a great client uh, growing a fantastic business. Uh, Tammy Slay says, I love seeing Reed's core values behind him. So Reed, tell me about the importance of your core values in your business. Is that something that, you know, everybody, you know, it's funny. I was on a call earlier just today with a, with a potential client out of uh, Texas. And I said, do you have core values? He says, yeah, they're amazing. I had a whole company help me put them together. I says, can anybody tell me who, what they are? He goes, no. So are your core values one of those things that you just create? And so you can say you have them or what do they, what do they actually mean to you in your business? No. So we, in any interview that we ever do, we always bring up our core values and what we're looking for. And we tell them up front, like we're looking for people that, that fit what our core values are. And if you, if you're not a fit, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing something wrong. It just means you're not a fit for what we're trying to do. Um, so it's not a right or wrong thing. We've just, we've, my wife and I spent a lot of time, going through and figuring out what those core values were going to be in <clears throat> and making sure that it was something that was going to be an integral part of what we're doing. We discuss our core values every week and it's fun when we're dealing with other agents and we had one the other day and uh, they were like, our, our admin was like, man, she needs some core values. She, she's not communicating openly and honestly, like this is not working. And uh, you know, 
we get into, you know, one of our core values is if you say it, mean it. And we love bringing that one up all the time, you know, okay, I know I said I was going to do this and I've, I've got to do it. You know, if I say it, I mean it. So this is what we're going right. to do when I'm going to get done. Um, and it's, and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. It's easy to have good intentions or to make promises. It's harder to keep those promises. Right. Well, you know, we can, you know, we, 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 t what we normally do on our team meetings that we do once a week is we kind of rotate around the team and everybody in you, they pick a core value. One of the person, one of the people picks a core value and how do they relate it to their business or, you know, relate it to, to the world around them. Um, and we do that every week and it's amazing how it comes up in just our normal everyday conversation because we do that every week and are so intentional about it. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. So, so I, I can't see all your core values, but I'd love you to recite them or tell me what they are from that poster behind your head. Yeah, here let me. Um, so the first one, uh, be humble, hungry, and smart. You know, we we talk about this in our interviews. You have to have all three. If you've only got two of them, it doesn't work. Um, you know, if you're humble and smart, that's great, but you're not going to have the drive to get done what you need to get done. If you're hungry and humble, you know, you're going to have issues and get tripped up in transactions because you're not smart enough to get through the process. And if you're smart and hungry and not humble, you're just going to be a jerk. Um, so you're not the type of people that we want on our team. Um, communicate openly and honestly is, is pretty self-explanatory. You know, most of the time you just have to get through those tough conversations and, and lay it out there. And, and usually it turns out better than what you were expecting. Um, if you say it, mean it, that was something that was driven into my head all my life. You know, Something, something from my parents, you know, I knew when they said like, all right, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. There was no gray area. There was no like, oh, well, you've been good or whatever. Like that's what happened. And so that was something that was been vital to us. Um, I don't have a really big family. My wife has an enormous family, but I've got friends that are like family. So we, we had one of them be uh, love your people. So whoever your people are, make sure you love them, take care of them, check in on them. Um, so that's been something that's vital to us. Um, and then obviously real estate is not for the faint of heart. You know, what, what, what we're trying to do is not easy. So you have to love what you do. Um, so we talk about that a lot. And then probably my favorite is be above average. You don't have to be the best at everything to be a, a very successful at this. Um, you just have to be above average and plan on that every day. And it's, it's amazing where it's taken us so far. Yeah, that's it. Those are incredible core values. And I love that you have them on the desk behind you. I love that it's something you talk about. Uh, you have another quote on the wall behind you and I can only read the bottom half of it, but tell me what that says. Um, so it says, don't worry about criticism from people you wouldn't seek advice from. Uh, that's a, uh, let me move here, Dambo Sweeney from the, uh, the head coach of the Clemson Tigers uh, brought that up. And I don't know where I was. I saw that in, a, in an interview that he did. And I was like, man, that is awesome. You know, there's a lot of naysayers out there you know, that'll talk bad about you. But, you know, when it comes down to it, if they're not somebody you're going to seek advice from, then it, their opinion really doesn't matter that much. Um, you know, I want to get, I want to take criticism. I want people to feel comfortable enough that I care about to give me criticism when I need it. So that way it's constructive and I can do better. So that's, that's, that's been a big thing that we've talked about actually for the past couple of weeks. It's been, it's been good for us. You know, Reed, it's interesting when I interview leaders, it's really interesting that leaders have a common thread and oftentimes a common thread is the way that they look at that and adhere to their core values. It's not the, it's not, they didn't build the core values so they could tell people what they'd like to be. They built their core values because that's what they, that's who they are in their heart and their soul. And I, and I'm getting that same from you and from, uh, from your sweet wife. And by the way, the first time I met her, I knew who was in charge. Yes. It didn't take long to figure that out. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about how you've been dealing with, uh, you said that your the COVID hasn't made a big impact on your business from a transactions perspective, you're killing it. Uh, what, how have you pivoted? What are some of the things you've done differently? What are you, what are you most proud of your team for? Uh, I mean, really, we haven't done a lot different. I mean, there's been some little things. Obviously, we've done more you know, virtual listing presentations or some virtual showings or virtual buyer's appointments. So we've done things more virtually, but ultimately what we're doing isn't any different than what we were doing from a day-to-day -day basis. You know, convert, you know, we're still calling in on our top 50 and having those intentional conversations every month. Our conversations have just changed, you know, and, you know, instead of getting into some details, but, you know, sometimes it's, you know, just, Hey, how are you doing? I know, you know, everybody's dealing with a lot of difficult situations right now. You know, what kind of, you know, things you're running into, um, and it's been amazing how people will open up and talk about those things just when you ask about them, you know, when you have people that are being, you know, mom, teacher, 
and also trying to work all at the same time from home and there's no break, um, that gets tough. Um, right. You know, so people have had to work through those things. I've had a handful of friends that have, um, you know, lost jobs and are like, hey, you know, I'm looking for this type of job. You know, this is, you know, you know, this is what I was doing before. If you hear about anything, you know, let me know. Um, you know, we've, we've kept our ear out and, you know, and I've sent people a few things like, Hey, so-and-so's hiring, or I heard somebody else is looking for this, or, you know, Hey, this company has been really great to work with. I don't know if you've ever talked to them or reach out to them, but you know, maybe that'll work. Um, but, but really it's, it's, we just continued working. I think a lot of, uh, unfortunately, a lot of agents I know, you know, got really scared really fast and kind of put their head in the sand or they, uh, they were worried they weren't going to make it. So like, I know agents that have left and, you know, went and picked up jobs at Amazon or some other you know places, you know, because they needed the consistent income, you know, they're used to those peaks and valleys. Um, and they're, you know, they're agents that were doing pretty well. Um, and it was just a matter of us sticking to those things that we've always talked about. And it's, and it's continued to work. You know, we, you know, we're, we normally have somewhere around, you know, 10 pending transactions or something at any given time. And right now we're at 22. Wow. Sweet. So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a lot of fun, but you know, we've, we've worked really hard and we've worked around schedules. Um, I, I remember when that was a good year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was <laughs> a really good year at any time. Um, you know, Christy and I played around with our schedules, you know, she, she kind of made the decision in our, in our family you know, that she stayed home with the kids. She helped with the school part of it, but she was still working her leads. And so we just changed it. So since I was the one out, I went out and did her showings and stuff for her. And we worked around those schedules. Um, and it, you know, we just, we just made it work. Um, it was difficult, but you know, it wasn't any challenges that anybody else wasn't having. So, you know, we just kind of kept focus on, you know, these are the things that we need to keep doing. And, and that's what we did. Yeah, I really like that. As you, if you hear something from Reed or you have an idea or something that resonated with you, make sure you like the video. Uh, let them know that you appreciate it. Sarah Michelle Bliss says she, she's happy to see you here. Um, there, uh, Mike Horner says he loves being part of the Workman system. His coach is David uh, David Weissman, David Weissman out of Oklahoma oh City. You know David, he's a great coach. Uh, it's fun to see some of our clients on here just um, you know, echoing some of the thoughts that that you're saying right there. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, Reed, as you, you know, you've, you kind of have a uh, being – being an elite athlete, you had a lot of coaches in your life and a lot of people that you had to follow their advice. And so I've learned that whenever I've worked with athletes or people that have had coaching in their life, they're more coachable. Uh, do you have any, can, can you think of any specific coaches in your life? And I'm not talking about workman stuff. I'm talking about the, in your athletic life that made an impact on you, that changed the way you looked at the world or helped you achieve something greater than what you thought was possible. Um, so I go back to, so my very first coach, his name is Robert Winningham. Um, he coached for Lakeside, uh, which is one of the largest teams in the country. They've got one of the old, the, like the oldest annual swim meet in the country. And he started a team in Southern Indiana. Um, so I joined the team when I was five years old and I've always, he's, you know, he always push, push people to do their best, but from him is actually how I got in real estate. Um, I, he was just one of those people that I always stayed in touch with. He always reached out to a lot of the swimmers just to kind of keep those relationships going. Even when he was, you know, he wound up and then moved to Texas, but we always just kept that relationship. And, we, and he kept telling me, he's like, Reed, I think you'll be good at the commercial real estate thing. He actually flew me down uh, to the Dallas Fort Worth area and set me up like 10 different interviews with development companies down there. Um, Cause he was like, I, I believe that you'll be good at this. You need to look into, into, you know, doing commercial real estate. So that's actually how I got started. Now I got down there and they were like, Oh yeah, it'll be six to nine months until you might get your first paycheck, which is a little difficult for a uh, 21 year old college graduate. So I wound up and started at home, but he's part of the reason that I got into real estate. I don't forget about that part where you were hungry. Oh man. Yes. Um, I remember, you know, I had, when I first started, you know, I started in September, 2007. So it was the beginning of the end, the way I like to word it. You know, I had lots of weekends where I worked at, you know, local restaurant on the weekend just to help, um, you know, make sure bills and stuff were paid. Um, you know, but it was, it was all part of it, but I had to learn the hard way, which was, which was huge for me. You know, it wasn't like you just, you know, set a sign up or you put something up online and people start calling you. You know, you had to make all of those cold calls and that was vital for how I've been able to do what I, what I do today. Um, and then I would also say uh, Ray Luz, who's the, uh, the head coach at IU, you know, he pushed me beyond 
my limiting beliefs, like that was all changed. You know, when you're competing at that level and just the amount of time and effort and energy that goes into uh, training for those events, even if you're not like, you know, I wasn't as fast as a lot of those people, but I was still doing a lot of the workouts that they were doing. You know, so I, I have no problem working. You know, I can say that I can work as hard as anybody. You know, I don't think anybody can outwork me. I, I'm not necessarily going to outwork everybody, but you can't outwork me because I've done it all. You know, we had plenty of mornings, you know, where you had to be at the pool at 515 in the morning and then you swam for two hours and then went to college classes and then you had three and a half hour practice after that. You know, we did morning practices four days a week. Saturdays was seven to 10. You know, like when you're doing that many hours, it was it was crazy. So, it's, you know, that work ethic is you can't you can't teach that like that just takes time and effort to get to that. You know, right now, my goal is to swim 100 miles for the year, which sounds like a big number. And I was breaking it down. And when I was in college, we were doing that in two and a half, three weeks. Wow. So, I, you know, swimming, swimming created my work ethic and my habits. Like, you know, I, I have no problem getting up in the mornings, you know, because I, I did it for so long. Um, I, I really attribute swimming to a lot of my success and, and work ethic just because of everything you had to do to compete at those levels. I mean, you just had to. So Reed, I've, I've become the summer project for some, uh, some retired gentlemen in my neighborhood. And this morning they got me up at six 30 and made me walk seven miles before I got to the office today. And every day it's having someone who cares about you enough to make you set the appointment, go out and do that. And I've been doing that every day for the last, I think it's, I think we're eight or nine days in a row right now. And I feel so much better having somebody else that cares enough about me to say, let's go. And yeah. it's also embarrassing that, you know, they're in their late seventies and early eighties and I'm the one that's tired. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I, I certainly think exercise is, is, is vital to, to me doing what I, what I do. And I, I think it's vital for a lot of people. People don't spend enough, enough time on that. You know, when we were in the, in the midst of the COVID-19 stuff and, you know, I always swim at the Y, you know, that was all shut down. Like, man, I could tell a difference in everything, you know, the way I felt and mood and, and all of that, like that all changed when I couldn't swim for three months. Like it's yeah it's way to escape and, you know, just get into your mind and, you know, like, okay, what do I need to get done or just to break from everything like that is, that is vital to me. So, so I'm real curious. Um, how, how do you take what you've learned in your, in your coaching experience as a student and apply that to how you're helping other people as coaching clients. So you're, you're coaching other agents. Now you're coaching your team. How are you, uh, how are you doing that? How are you helping them? How do you take what you've learned? This is, is, is one, you know, having the knowledge of the, the systems that you guys have created and are teaching um, and having that experience. But even, even on top of that, one of the, one of the reasons that I got into coaching was not only to help other people, but it also make me better at what I'm doing. You know, if you're teaching the information to somebody else, you're going to, you have to know it extremely well. So I do that not only for my coaching clients, but it also helps me with my team and what I'm trying to do here. Um, but it's also fun when I can go through some of those, go through some of the programs and you can tell their, you know, the coaching clients are wanting to push back a little bit and you can say, well, you know, you're probably thinking this, this, and this, and they're, and, and they're, they're just surprised. Like, how do you know that? And I'm like, well, I was in your, I've been in your shoes before. Like I've been at that stage and, you know, part of my real estate journey, I was there and these were a lot of the concerns I had and here's how I got around them. And here's what, here's why this makes everything so much better. And that's, that's been a lot of fun. Um, I've got some pretty awesome coaching clients and it's, and it's been fun to see them uh, really grab a hold of what we're, what we're working on and, and it's making a big difference for them. So that's, I mean, that's, that's huge. That's, that's a, that's a big why for me. Like I I love passing on what I know and what I've gotten to learn on to other people. And, you know, I word it as, you know, changing their stars, if you will. Um, like, man, you can make a lot of good changes. I love that. So uh, give me a couple of nuggets. What, what's a couple of things that, that you, that are your go-tos that you like, okay. So when I'm struggling with someone, or I'm having a hard time getting someone progressing, give me a couple of nuggets or a couple of things that are like, if you just do this, this will change your stars. This will make the biggest impact on your life or your business. Um, well, the most in terms of, well, I guess one of the best things that I did and Christian, I did this a long time ago was 
we, we have a shared calendar. And so whenever we have family things, all of our family stuff goes into our calendars. Right. And if I have an issue, you know, something comes up with a client, well, then I have an appointment. And my clients never ask, you know, like, oh, well, what's your appointment or who are you meeting with? It doesn't matter. I have, I have another appointment, you know, but sometimes that's, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm taking my daughter to swim practice or we're going to basketball practice or we're going out to dinner or we're doing, you know, some function with the family or Christy and I have a date night. Like that gets put into the calendar and I have an appointment. Um, that's that's huge. Um, the other big thing that I love going back to is, you know, if you're most agents treat this, you know, you treat real estate as a job and not as a business. And so we have to do a lot of the difficult things up front to set up the systems and process. Like everybody knows they need them, but actually getting them set up is the hard part. And so if you do that hard part up front and create your business, it'll pay dividends down the road, but it's not something that's overnight. It takes time to build it up. You know, you guys are spot on when you're like the first two years are going to suck. If you get those through those first two years and have everything set up like, man, it's, it's, it, it changes everything. It, it really does. Um, but it just takes time to get through all of that. I'm not sure those are my exact words, but I think it was the first year is hard. And the second year is when the magic happens, <laughs> but it takes two years. It really does. Yeah. I said that to a, you know, it's really funny, uh, Reed, we're having, you know, this COVID thing has been really interesting and the conversations we're having with people and whether or not they want to you know, get a coach or come into coaching or whatever. And it's really, really interesting. I had a lady yesterday who is, who will be, who will be assigned to coach today. And she came in and she opened her brokerage in February. Now think about opening your brokerage in February and what the market's done since then. And, and then she said, I said, how has COVID affected you? And she said, well, I mean, I still have it. I'm not quite over it yet. So she, it's not, she's not being affected by COVID. She has it right. So she's got it. She's got the bug. And now she's, now she's like, you know what? I've decided that I'm not going to wait until I'm feeling better to get my butt in gear and to build this business. I need to go now. And I'm like, what, what is it that's that intangible thing that's inside of people that makes them want to just lean into a problem instead of, you know, pull back and hide. You start, you said something early on. It's a lot of agents that, you know, a lot of friends even, you know, just kind of disappeared during COVID and you decided to crank your business up and lean into it. This is a gal who's like, give me a coach. I'm ready to go. I need it right now. And I'm sick. Like when someone says, I'm going to wait till COVID's over. I'm like, why do you have it? <laughs> Most of them don't even have it. They're just, yeah, right. they're just worried about the concept of it. So I, I don't know. Right, I just right. like, how do you, I don't know how to identify that or how do you teach that? But man, when I find it, I want to help that person. Like I can't even you hold me back because I want to just yeah, yeah. like help them so much. Yeah. Well, you know, in my background, being an athlete, I'm a little biased towards athletes and there's, you know, when I got into coaching originally, what went through my mind to drive me there is, you know, look at, you know, pick whoever your favorite athlete is. And I guarantee you, they have a coach and even like, you know, pick a basketball coach or football coach. Most of those guys even have individual coaches during the off season that are still pushing them to make sure they're doing the right things. And it's not that these, you know, that these athletes don't know what they're supposed to be doing. Some of them are the most knowledgeable in their sport that you'll ever find, but having somebody else from that completely different perspective makes such an, makes just such an invaluable difference, you know, being able to hold you accountable and look at from, you know, that 30,000 feet, you know, a completely different perspective. You know, it's hard when you get in there and grind every day, but if you've got somebody that you know cares about you pushing you along, it makes, you know, it just makes it that much easier to go. I just and think I, it's I don't awesome. describe coaching any better than that. Like, yeah, I think you're exactly right. I, th I think you're exactly right. All right. So um, let's give everybody a one or two things that they should focus on right now for the next 30 days. Like, what are you telling your clients? What do you have your team focused on? Give me a couple of things that you should absolutely like, if you'll do this, you'll get the greatest impact. Uh, and by the way, I love that you share your calendar with your wife. You put family things in first. When you have a date night, I have an appointment. Like if that's the takeaway from today, that's a huge takeaway. And I think that um, a lot of people, the first thing to go off your calendar are the family things. You sacrifice those to sell another right. house. And when you put those in and honor those relationships, it uh, it adds value to your business, not takes value away from your business. It's, it doesn't make sense, but it absolutely is truth. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that our team does really well that I believe is, is utilizing the top, our top 50 list. Hmm. We make sure we have intentional conversation with them every month. 
Um, you know, we like doing the pop by stuff, you know, a little bit more than others, but, you know, we, we try to make it so it's not just leaving something on their doorstep and we want to try and catch them at home and have some type of conversation, or even if we don't like, Hey, I want to make sure you got this. And then usually it leads into a conversation and, you know, you don't have to ask, you know, you don't have to ask for a referral nine times out of 10 in, in those conversations. All you do have to do is, you know, Hey, I haven't talked to you for a month. How's everything going? What's new? Um, and it's, you know, they, it's amazing that, you know, they start at reciprocating questions and I've never really asked, you know, I've never asked for referrals or we very rarely ask for those referrals and, and they'll come and they'll, they'll think of you. Um, you know, we've had quite a few, even with the, the COVID-19 um, pandemic, we've, we've had referrals come in from our clients just from calling and checking on them and seeing how they're doing. And it's, it's amazing how, how well that tool works, but you have to consistently do it. Um, you know, Tammy Slay's uh, presentation that she did for us going over, you know, the types of communications you're doing with them, you know, I hate going through text. I know that's the easiest way for a lot of people to respond, but you know, if you can actually have an intentional conversation with them and get them on the phone, like it, it just makes a difference in how likely they are to send you business. You know, you know, people get hundreds of texts a day and it's a lot more impersonal than a phone conversation. Um, and so I, I really try and push with our team to do those phone conversations. Um, we're starting to get into a situation where we can uh, do some more in-person meetings, which has been nice. We're actually in the process um, here at, on July 11th, we're going to do a client appreciation event. So we were trying to figure out last year, we did Christmas in July and we had Santa there and did pictures with the kids. We were like, how are we going to do something similar to this, but still put everybody in a situation to be successful? So what we did was we, we actually rented a local drive-in. So that way people can be in their cars and not huh. close to people. They can still have their family there. Um, and so that's what we're doing. We, we can have 300 cars there. So we're trying to get as many people there as possible and get, you know, it gives them a, a way to get out of the house. They can still feel safe um, being in their vehicles and, and can have the whole family there. Um, and then we're showing a, showing a Christmas movie at the night. Uh, we're showing Polar Express, you know, so it tied into being at night. What great. What a great so idea. They're walking around. A COVID free uh, ha a holiday event with a Christmas yeah. movie. I think that's, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Reed, I, I love the, um, I love the focus on the top 50. A lot of people who are just guests, they've never heard of the top 50 because they're not a part of Workman. But all the top 50 is, is you identify the 50 people in your business or your life that are most likely to give you one referral a year. And you put them into a group. You can invite them into a Facebook group. You create a group called your top 50. And then you have an intentional touch, a personal touch with them once a month. And I promise you, just as Reed just did, that if you'll work your top 50 with, um, with, a, with, a, with a spirit of serving, not selling, you'll find that there's a tremendous amount of business there. And uh, Reed, I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't give better advice than that. I think that that advice that you give to people is to work their top 50 and just do it consistently and be present at that yeah. moment. They have those life events occur. Um, so what's next for your team? What do, what do you, what are you looking for the future? What do you see in your horizon? Well, I'm, I actually want to share something else with you too. This is a, a, a lead tracker story that I know you, that you'll, you'll appreciate. So I've been, I've been sharing this one a lot lately. Okay with some people we've been recruiting. Um, you know, so the lead tracker allows us to follow up with clients and make sure nobody falls through the cracks. Right. So the best example that I have is Chrissy had a client that had a property under contract. They wound up and she had some financing issues and the deal, the transaction fell through. So she had her in as a C lead because it was going to take her a while to get through some of those financing issues. She called her every month and left a voicemail with her every month for 18 months. She did not answer her phone once. And on the 19th month, she called Chrissy and said, hey, I finally got everything situated. I'm ready to buy a house. And they've got one under contract right now. <laughs> That's awesome. She called every month and never had one conversation with them. But she was consistent and calling and leaving a message and just checking in. You know, hey, seeing how everything's going, seeing where you're at in the process. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you when you're ready. Well, tell her congratulations. And I love that C lead. You know, people, they think that you call them once or twice. If they don't call you back, they're not interested. And that just isn't the case. They're embarrassed or they're not ready to engage. And all we can do is to is continue to follow up. So yeah. call a C lead once a month during the week of the eighth. I love it. Yeah. So that's, that's been fantastic. Um, so, so goals for us. So um, we, we really haven't changed a lot of our goals. Um, and I've, I've been pretty intentional on, 
you know, making sure we're doing the things we're supposed to so we don't have to change our goals for the year. So our goal as a team was to do 130 transactions this year. So we're, we're, behind, we're behind pace by a little bit, but that goal hasn't changed. And we're certainly accelerating as, as people are starting to get back out there. Um, and, you know, we're seeing a ton of activity. So we're using that as, as a big recruiting tool to help uh, bring people in. And then just, just the number of people that have been out searching, you know, having these systems and processes in place to make sure they don't fall through the cracks is, is right. a huge thing for us. You know, there's so many people out there looking to make a move right now. And we've, you know, made sure that they haven't fallen through the cracks and we've been able to continue to follow up with them the way that we're supposed to. And it's, we're really starting to see it pay dividends. I, I love that. Well, at, you know, I believe you're going to get everything you put out there to achieve because you're going to figure out what it takes to have, make it happen. We're going to start in the next 30 days, a 120 day listing challenge. And I'll make sure that you're part of that. You can participate. I know you're not much of a competitor. So I think there'll be a few other people that will lean into it a little bit harder than you. Uh, but if you decide that you want to play, then uh, we got a seat at the table for you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be ready. <laughs> that was me throwing it down. Come on. I was giving, that was baiting you on that. Reed, where's your, come on, bring it. <laughs> I, I don't like to lose. That's for sure. I don't like to lose. Yeah. I love that. Well, I would just want to thank you for being part of our Facebook live today and our Wednesday flash briefing. Uh, it's been a tremendous, uh, it's been a, a tremendous opportunity for me to have you be part of our life. I think a lot of you and your family, and I appreciate the impact that you make, not just on the workman family, but also on all of the clients that you serve and the team members that you serve as well. And I wish you continued success as you continue to make a difference in the lives of those around you, Reed. So thanks again for being part of our group. Yeah. Thank you for having me.